You're tuned in to the Behind the Scenes Podcast with your host, Man Robinson, the place where educational, motivational, and inspiration collide with innovation. Be entertained while learning from some of the best actors, directors, and producers in the industry today with self-help tips that you can apply in your career. We don't just talk about it, we be about it. So, welcome back to another episode of Behind the Scenes with Man Robinson. Like I told y'all in the opening, we have a, oh my God, a much needed force in the in the film industry, entertainment industry, black community, the whole nine yards. We want to bring in Mr. John Gibson. How you doing, brother? How you doing, sir? Thank you for having me. Oh, thank you for coming, man. And thank you for doing the things that you do. Glad you know? to be here. You know, diversity is key. So, absolutely. Uh, so we appreciate your efforts and everything you've been doing for the last seven years at the MPA diversity efforts pushing illusion and film. Uh, like I said, welcome, Mr. John Gibson. Thank you, man. Thanks for having me. So, we felt it was important to do this interview <clears throat> through the representation of top levels in the industry, especially right now in this intense climate. Can you uh, tell us about your background and? You know how you got where you are? Yeah, well, first, in, um, MPA, let me just give a little backstory exactly what the MPA is. It is the um, trade association. We like to say the global, the face of the global film and TV industry. Okay. Specifically, our members are the big six. So you have Walt Disney, Netflix, Paramount, Sony, Universal, Warner Brothers. Those are our members, but we support the entire industry now. Uh, we're headquartered in DC. Although our largest office is, is in LA with the studios, with all the major studios. Um, so I got my start with a lot of people in DC um, government. I started uh, working when I was in um, undergrad at the Department of Agriculture. I was a career employee in the corner somewhere. Then I had the opportunity to go work for the Senate, working for Senator Barbara Boxer, California. And then um, got the amazing opportunity to work for President Clinton as a political appointee back at the Department of Agriculture, but this time I'm working directly for the Secretary of Ag. Wow. And that kind of served the basis of what I do now because back then, um, USDA, which is the acronym for agriculture, had the unfortunate reputation of being considered one of the most racist um, federal agencies. The nickname was the last plantation <laughs> for, both, <laughs> for both internally and externally. A lot of um, discrimination against black and migrant farmers. So we worked with a number of the major civil rights groups. So that planted the seed. And then from there, worked with two major law firms doing public policy and one. The other, I was director of corporate, sorry, director of marketing for the corporate diversity practice group. So again, working with civil rights groups, the Congressional Black Caucus and others, then did private equity and some other things. And then in 2011, I came on board the MPA as part of the, um, the chairman's office. And so then we knew we wanted to do something about diversity, but it was, um, let's kind of see where this is. You know, our studios weren't as outwardly talking about it as they are all now. Right. And so that is kind of where we, we jumped off in January, 2012, so now eight years. And I think it's important to note, my friend, is that this is pre-Oscar, so I, this wasn't due to any congressional pressure this wasn't due to any threats of boycott of the industry. It was simply, you know, this is just the right thing to do. We advocate on behalf of the industry. We should be advocating and moving in this space. As a black boy from DC, I wanted to see better representation of folks that look like me. So you're from DC as, as well? Born and raised. And, and, and that's where the headquarters is, is at, and that's where the president is at, and that's- We are. You've seen where the Black Lives Matters in DC painted on the Black Lives Plaza. MPA yeah. is right there. That's on 16th Street between 16th, 16th Street between K and H Street. We're at 16th and I. So where the word matters is, that's our building. And, and that's a perfect place for it because what you do matters. And I wanted to ask you, did you did they have a, a diver, uh, diversity program before you started no. it? No. So, Okay. So there was you, no roadmap. I, you know, it was no roadmap to even have one. I don't even know. I'm sure we did some level of screenings. You know, the MPA theater is historic, historic, but no 
program that not to the level we have now now wow well you know i i noticed that when i read about it that spike lee said in a he said in an interview or a press conference back in i think it was 2002 or 2003 at the sundance 2002 it was 2012 it was 2012. the same month that we launched the program now was that was that coincidental or did that motivate you to do it as well well me and the chief executive at the time we had been talking about it mm-hmm. and when spike had said that it really resonated with us and because i felt you know uh at that time i really wasn't going out to la this is only six months into the job but i had to believe just by dealing with our incredible studio people in dc it had to be somebody on these lots that looked like you and i that had to be women or uh, from the latino community asians uh, lgbtq there had to be people on these lots working towards better diversity and inclusion and i wasn't right i found them they were out there they are still out there making some of the magic that we see happening now. Our studios, if you know anything about the federal side, the studios are big, they are massive. So change within takes some time, but look at where we are now. So yeah. the work started there and now all of them have their own inclusion leads on each of the studio lots that are working throughout the entire studio. And that's that's huge. And is that, and are you referring to the six big, big, big ones that you yeah. have? All of them have their own, yeah, that is big. Yeah, that is big. So, yeah. so, so the audience knows what Spike Lee said was that Hollywood doesn't know about black people. Yeah, no, I actually yeah. said Hollywood didn't care about black. They didn't care about, and that, you know, some other people said that as well. Yeah, uh, you know, Spike Lee being, you know, who he is, it's who he is, and being, he knows, he knows better than all of us. Absolutely, he, you know, because he started that that whole, uh, you know, being a black man in, in the industry. So I always, I always say it, um, and we can see it even now. Um, sometimes hard truths don't come out pretty, but they have to be told. Yeah. And once you hear it, the true measure of your commitment is what do you do on the other side of it? And we put skin in the game. Um, we created this program. Now, eight years later, we have 40 multicultural partners, 40, which is significant, representing every community, black community, Latino community, Asian American, Pacific Islander, LGBTQ, obviously women, Native Americans. And so um, again, it's um, we made tremendous progress. We still got a long ways to go. So we're not even close to where we need to be, the industry. But I am proud of the progress that our members have made moving forward on this important issue. Well, you know, I, I have a question. So you, you guys are right in the middle of the Black Lives Matter. Not yeah. only the, the, the symbol that was obviously put by, there by the mayor, yeah. but also the movement and you have that that program going how do you how are you pivoting right now do you have any and, and, and before i get to that there's a lot of different companies like amazon and netflix yeah. and nike and all the ones coming forward to say hey we're behind this this period you know how, what are you guys doing what are you, you know what's how are you pivoting around this as well moving forward man that's a good question and everything that i do with this program and even advising my colleagues and our leadership it has to be authentic because you see a lot of people, you know, last Tuesday, there were a lot of blacked out squares with people who didn't have track record and fighting for equality. The work I've been doing has been just that. Our first partner was the American Black Film Festival, of which I am a board member. That was our first partner. And it spoke to the importance of the black community to film and TV. So working with all of these groups, making sure that there are pipeline opportunities for people that look like you and me and others, making sure that these stories get told because that's where we succeed as a society when all types of stories are just told. You know, my story as a black man growing up in DC might be different from somebody who grew up in North Carolina, who grew up in Mississippi, who grew up, that's why you have to have a diversity of voices even within communities. So looking at the social justice space, we are gonna be doing some stuff, but we're gonna do it carefully. We're gonna do it measured because I wanna make sure we do it right because there are people that have been on the front line of the social justice movement, and I wouldn't want to do anything that compromises them yeah. or makes it seem like we can just jump in now we're experts. So right. within the next month or so, we're gonna be announcing some stuff that we're gonna be doing both internally as an organization, but also externally, and I'll make sure that you are one of the first that are aware of. Oh, I really appreciate it, man. I, Absolutely. I'm, I've been known myself for diversity, but you know that's a personal thing, but doing it on a corporate level, that you're doing it is, is definitely something that um, 
it, it's sought after. And I appreciate speak, that. Thank you. And speaking of that, you know, it's not really what you're doing is not really on the creative side. So what are you, what are you doing like like supporting the corporate side? Of okay. That? So let me explain when you say not to create. So the MPA, we don't work in the creative space at our studios. Gotcha. So we don't do, you know, the green light on the projects, uh, casting, talent development. That's all the stuff that we do. So I found out about projects, reading the Hollywood trades like you all do, whether it be Variety, The Rock, Deadline. That's when I find out this stuff has happened. So we don't get the inside track. The closest would be our team in LA that does the ratings of films. But obviously we, the industry has a huge pipeline issue. We need more diverse people because the more diverse executives you have, the more projects that, that will be green light, green lit that will represent all types of communities. So we work with a number of our partners on pipeline access opportunities, whether it be, again, the film, the multicultural film festivals, ghetto film school, uh, the, no, the, the National Association of Latino Independent Producers, Urban World. Uh, one of my favorites is HBCUs in LA. I'm on the board of that for the last four years. Now this year we're doing virtual because everything's happening. For the last three years, upwards of 70 students have participated in the program, which is during the summer, eight weeks. And you know, the challenge of getting to LA is expensive. Yeah. So when your travel and lodging is covered for eight weeks and you have a job, a paid job, that's incredible. And of the 70 students, those that were eligible, meaning they were graduated, 14 are now working full-time in the industry. That is a tremendous success story. I gotta give it up to the founder of that, Stacy Milner. She is a godsend. It's the Entertainment Industry College Outreach Program. Stacy and Ted Milner, her husband, they run it. They have a passion for historically black colleges and universities. And so again, thousands of students apply each year, but the slots we have 30 to 35, so it's competitive. But there is, it's probably, I think, the most unique internship program in all of Hollywood. It sounds like it, because diversity doesn't mean just black or just white. It means, no. like you said, multi, multicultural. And I got people have to understand that, that it's, diversity is, solves everything. That's exactly what we need. So, and, and what I love about this one is it's focused specifically on the HBCU schools because, again, it's 120 of them, Southeast USA. And again, Hollywood seems so massive. You know, these kids, they want to contribute to the industry, but LA seems so far from them. So to be able to bring them to LA, to see them so engaged, and let me tell you, it's a lot of folks in Hollywood that went to HBCUs. And so to be able to get them connected to this, is powerful. That is powerful, and that's a hell of a step in the right direction as well. Yes, sir. I mean, Hollywood, Hollywood seems far from me. I mean, it's, it is. It's, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a, a, a mystery away. So to be able to provide that, you know, that's that's great. So thank you, man. Appreciate that, man. I, I can say it a million times how much we appreciate it, man. Because you know we just didn't have that. Now we have it. So you, you know, um, growing up in D.C. Uh, at a time where uh, it, it it was it was a little rough at times, and so I didn't always see the very best in my people reflected in film, TV, and. You know, movies for me played a big part. They were escapism when times weren't good. They were inspirational and aspirational. So this entire program that we have is from a personal, it comes, it's a personal project for me to make sure that the next generation, they will have lots of positive examples. And even when you tell us true stories of communities, again, it's not always pretty. Sometimes it's gritty, but there has to be a balance because there are lots of hidden figure stories out there, a lot of heroes, everyday heroes. And I think if nothing else, COVID has taught us that our everyday heroes um, don't wear capes. <laughs> They're not necessarily who we thought they are. My mom used to always say there's nothing, um, there's dignity and honest work and honest work is good work. Yeah. And so to be able to showcase those stories, we have to do more of that. I agree, man. You just made me think of some, uh, you, you remember John Amos from uh, Good Times? Absolutely. James, yes. Evans, yeah. James Evans. So he actually went through that. He mm -hmm. his character was killed off the show, and you know back then watching it, yeah. he, he just. But it was a reason. He wanted yeah. to exactly what you just said. He wanted to be able to show all the stories in the in in the black community, and the writers weren't going for it. And you know one of the things about what was so significant about not just the show but his character, he was a strong male father in the household. So exactly. shout out to. Um, 
you know, um, the the cast for rallying around him. But you know, it was like I have to be this father. And, and you know, and if you watch the show, uh, many times he gave up really good employment opportunities away from the family because he didn't want to leave his family without a strong male lead. Exactly. And so he was to a lot of folks. A lot. Of, he was, you know, that surrogate father to a lot of folks. He was. He was actually my father's example. Yeah. <laughs> my, my father was actually do stuff that he would see. And on you know, the show. Um, that's, that's the role who played his wife. Um, that was her condition on taking the role, because I think initially she was going to be a single mom, and she was like, "No, I won't take it without a man, a father in the, in the household." So. Again, back then, looking out for each other the way we are now. You got to look out for folks. Yeah, and that's amazing. It started so, and that was the first black show. And look how yeah. far we are. You know, we have a black man in, in Washington running the whole illusion, <laughs> and, and the other other studios are following. So that's great. Well, so uh, we got so, some folks out in LA that every time I go out there and I sit with them, I'm blown away. It's like we got some inclusion leaders on these lots that are making some stuff happen, and. So again, um, you know, iron sharpens iron. So uh, thank you for that. Well, we appreciate it. And we're going to go on a break right now after that, because okay. that was powerful. And we're going to come back. And what we do right now, we go with a segment called Man's Random Thought. So we right back with John Gibson right after this. And now it's time for Man Robinson's Random Thought of the Day. Today's Random Thought. Oh, my goodness. I just had a random thought. Why are all these people? saying that the coronavirus was made up that somebody is sending out the virus to kill everybody welcome back to behind the scenes with man robinson we don't just talk about it we be about it so welcome back to behind the scenes with man robinson that was my random thought of the day i do them every week well we are back with the incredible Mr. John Gibson. How you doing, brother? How you doing? I'm doing good. Again, this has been fun. So thanks again for having me. Well, I mean, you know, the show is about giving back. And obviously, that's what you do. You told us a story about all the kids and they're working in the industry now. And it's that's what this is about. So we're happy to have you on the show. And the things you say are powerful. And that brings me to one of the things you said in the interview. Mm -hmm. You you said everyone who works in illusion in TV and film wants to ultimately work yourself out of a job. (laughs) <laughs> what, what do you mean by that? So, I mean, so the, the inclusion, diversity, um, belonging um, space, it's, it's a very special space. But, you know, and the way things are, we, we will be all gainfully employed for a very long time. But that, the point of that was simply saying every organization should get to the point where diversity, equity, inclusion should just be a cornerstone of your operations. So at every level, executives, managers, employees should be able to talk about the principles that guide the organization in regards to making sure that it looks like America. It is diverse, um, that people are made to feel comfortable, that they are made to feel like they belong so they can be productive and excited to come to work. Meaning so you don't just have to will me or someone else in to just talk about this issue. Every, again, yeah, I can be the specialist on it, but everybody should be able to talk about it with great confidence. It is just a cornerstone of how you operate. And there are some companies out there that do that. Um, I got to give props to my CEO, uh, Ambassador Charles Rifkin, who was, he worked for President Obama. He was the ambassador to France, and then he worked at the State Department. Uh, one of the first things he did when he came on board in 2017, I've been doing the work, but he elevated me to the first ever MPA deputy chief of staff and senior director for inclusion. Now, you know, I'm VP, but he really cleared the space for me to do more. And reporting directly to him, so that the CEO had his fingertips on the pulse of the inclusion work that we were doing and the industry's doing. And when, again, I say this time after time, when organizations have the CEO at the level, that level, focused on diversity, inclusion, belonging, the entire, the entire organization, if not industry, will benefit from it. Because, because that person's asking every day, what are we doing? What's happening? They're challenging the status quo. And we have that at MPA. Yes, you do. 
I, I know you're proud of, of exactly what you're doing and seeing other people follow, you know, what what you started the illusion. Mm-hmm. So is there uh, tell us about a proud moment that you have, like a, let's 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 say a project that did exactly what you wanted it to do. Well, Could you know, you- uh, there are a lot. And I think you as a filmmaker, you will understand this one. So, again, American Black Film Festival, I'm on the board of it every year. Uh, we do some level of programming. Yeah, you know, we'll work with one of our studios, they'd like the opening night film, but we do our own specific MPA programming. Do you know for the first time last year, this had never happened at any film festival, but we took the head of the ratings administration. So this is the group of folks that work at MPA that rate every film, the raters. Mm-hmm. So if you know from rated G to rated R, and then you have the red one beyond it, yeah. uh, to take them to a film festival with in a room full of emerging content creators of color mm-hmm. and to do a discussion. So that's Kelly McMahon. She's the, so Kara is the classification ratings administration. As you shared offline, you have a movie going through that process. Mm-hmm. So she's sitting in one chair. Then you have administrators, I mean, advertisers. So what is that? Anything that, that's needed to market your film, whether it be gifts on social media, uh, Instagram posts, Twitter posts, TV trailers, um, YouTube trailers, uh, posters, anything, again, that markets a film. This team, they look at hundreds of thousands a year. And when you submit it, they're so good at it, they will try their best to get you an answer and approval within 24 hours. And most times I've heard they they do it within eight hours. They're that mm-hmm. good. So I had Marilyn Gordon and Yulia Jashevsky. They run the advertising administration. They were there. So the three of them in a room full of creators are talking about the ratings administration, how you advertise the product. It was just incredible. Found out, I even found out we have a independent filmmaker liaison that's part of our ratings team. That even if you just have your script, you're not even ready yet to, you might still be working on your funding for your film. You can submit your script and the liaison can tell you by looking at it, by reading it thoroughly, and kind of give you an indication of where the rating might land. Now you still, once your film is done, have to go through the formal ratings process. The mm-hmm. fact that you got an advocate on the inside who will help you and guide you. Because again, we're not there to censor your product. You know, whatever you believe you want your product to go, your film, we have to rate it based on certain guidelines because the ratings are first and foremost are for parents. They're educational tools. So ne- they will never censor. But we will work with you. And I think that's what people don't know. So to be able to take these incredible executives to ABFF in this room and have that dialogue that I mean like and just to see the way people their eyes lit up because now because the ratings for some people they think it's mysterious it's scary it's all and it's like no ratings are just like us they're parents but but it is scary though I mean because from a filmmaker standpoint we got to the point where we were just putting it in a trailer we find it on YouTube and we just put a rating in the beginning not official of course right but I but I was actually there believe it or not I was okay. at ABFF and I did okay. go in that room mm-hmm. and uh, last year and you know we you saw it was just a conversation and I would yeah. tell you they were nervous too because they'd never done this before uh-huh. and so but the energy just flowed and again you know even if people want to tell people when you if you submit a film and you might not get the rating you want the raters will work with you it's a collaborative process so we are there to support creativity at every level. Well, that's great because you know the MPA. We hear it all the time, but we didn't. I, honestly, people don't know that you do so much, yeah. you know, to support filmmaking. So, but I, you know, our, our demographic, ourselves, our show, uh, behind the scenes is eighteen to thirty-five. Yeah. So, what can you tell inspiring actors, directors, writers, producers who are looking to get into the film industry? Um, tell your stories because if you've seen what's been happening in the last several weeks, several months several years, we need more of our stories told. Because if more are told, people then will relate to the black experience. Um, Not based on what they perceive it to be, not based on what they've seen on some cable news network, from what you've shown them. And you know, with the the benefit of having smartphones is that you have your independent camera with you. Get out there and tell these stories. I mean, so many stories have probably popped up about COVID. We need to see these, these, 
the new generation of heroes. And you all are, y'all aren't just waiting. You're not taking no for an answer, which is a blessing. Get out there. You know, you have these platforms that you can now upload your stuff to. Trust me, the studios and the networks, they have teams of people that really just comb through social media platforms looking for the next generation, the next it person. So get your stories out there. We really, really need that. We, we need, we desperately need them. So, so you you also have the studio too. So I have I'll add to that question if you don't mind. Someone that wants to get in of color or martial culture that wants to get into that part of it, the actual working into a studio, you know, being a studio employee. Yeah. Any, yeah. Any recommendations on that? Look, all of them. I would tell you, do your research. All of them. They constantly advertise on the HR on their websites. Uh, again, a number of these groups. Um, if you look at the MPA website. They'll have a listing of our multicultural partners, again, like ABFF and so many of them. They help our studios with, platform, with our pipeline recruitment initiatives. You know, you want to get your foot in. And I'll tell you, especially with your, your demographic 18 to 35, you know, sometimes you just want to get in. So mm -hmm. it might not be your dream job. Like so many executives started out as an assistant. So don't turn your nose up at being an assistant. Because guess what? That gives you an, an incredible vantage point to learn and to see things. So you, again, you get your foot in the door, uh, master the job that you've been hired to do, and then start networking with them and looking at opportunities. That's why, and also I, I can't say enough how important film festivals are because a lot of executives, they go there and you want to network and that's the opportunity to kind of engage with people. I mean, that's a true, that's a true fact, both of them, that starting yeah. out just being a PA on set, you know, you learn so much on every yeah, day. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, and then, uh, you know, the, the film festival, we actually had a film acquired last year at the festival, so they are very, very important uh, f for it to get into the industry. Yeah, and, and, and the thing is, our studios support every type of job, so everybody doesn't want to be an actor, actress, a writer, cinematographer, director, but, hey, finance your field. Well, you got to have business managers, you have to have accountants, engineers, like um, you have medical professionals on sets. There are so many opportunities to be able to work in the, in the industry. So, you know, we contribute, we need you because we need more folks, particularly in the, you know, in the offices. So when stories are being pitched, you're fighting on behalf of your community to get those stories up. Yeah, I agree. You, you can't do it by yourself. You know, it, I'm a director. Absolutely, no. I'm a you know director producer myself, but it's so many people. You know, we, even with this show, we have producer our main producer Brittany, uh, and, and a couple of people. Brittany's the best. Yeah. Yes, she is, and she can hear you, Brittany. You're the best. Hey, Brittany. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you want the listeners to know more about your role as president of, Di of diversity and multicultural affairs? Well, I appreciate you giving me that title, president. That means means me more money, but I'm v I'm vice president. But I'm gonna get there one day. Hey. <laughs> but no, I mean, look, um, I view my role as a great connector. Mm -hmm. Again, MPA, we work in the advocacy space. And sometimes I, I view it as being like 10,000 feet in the air and I'm looking down. Uh, sometimes I see where my studios are moving, where some of these multicultural creativity organizations are moving, but they're not on the same block. I help navigate them to connect, to make some magic happen. So it really is providing opportunity for some incredible groups, providing opportunities and support, amplification. Again, our studios are doing some incredible stuff. So I really enjoy highlighting what they're doing because I, I yell at them about this and I get it. They are great storytellers because we love their products, but they don't always tell their story effectively. And I get it, you don't, when you're making progress, particularly in diversity and inclusion, you don't want to pat yourself on the back, but you need to talk about it because if people don't hear about it, they think you're not doing anything. So that's where the MPA comes in with our programming. We amplify and highlight what you're doing and we connect them with organizations and community groups that ordinarily they may not have had the opportunity to previously connect with. So we we supply that. But again, 40 groups in representing all types of group backgrounds and you know it's growing week by week, month by month. That's amazing. That is amazing. Yeah. 40 groups. Yeah. Wow. So, what can we expect in the near future? You may have already said this. Well, what can we yeah. expect from the program? 
Um, we're going to take it to the next level. Uh, we're going to fit. We're going to do some more virtual programming. So please follow us on our platforms. Instagram is at Motion Pictures. Twitter at Motion Pictures. Facebook, Motion Picture Association. And, you know, you'll be watching what we're doing. Um, pretty soon we will announce what we're going to do in the social justice space. But again, we're planning it because I want it right. We want it right. And so just stay connected and reach out to us. Let us know what's happening. Uh, we have an online magazine for people in the industry. Um, Thecredits.org is a great resource tool uh, with in-depth uh, interviews on folks within the industry, those established and those up and coming. So again, keep in touch and let us know your thoughts. That's that's great. That's a lot for you know for people like me. You know that's coming up. I started about ten years ago, yeah. and it, it it was nowhere near this much to grasp onto. You know to get started. Right. And, and exactly. Of course, yeah. of course, harder than that before me. But now the kids have more, and especially with your program, man. I'm just sitting here amazed at how much you guys offer and what they can get by just getting in contact with you. Yeah, absolutely. And again, our website has a link to all of our partners. We're, we're retooling it now so if not this week but next week you'll be able to see like the logos of all of our partners and click on those logos you'll go directly to their websites and you can see some of these you know film contests writing programs internships there's just a lot of information out there well i hope the audience got that and john i'm gonna tell you here at behind the scenes we are motivational inspirational and educational and you must my, my friend are very inspirational and with well, Brother Robinson, I appreciate you having me. And again, Brittany, thank you so much. Um, Black Film has been important to us. Um, I think my first interview was with Black Film. And uh, I always see Wilson Morales at events. Um, I can't say enough about him because Black media, when folks weren't clamoring for our talent the way they are now, Black Film kept them relevant and kept their names out there mm -hmm. and would make sure that people knew what they were doing. So I can never um, say enough about what you all do and how special you, you guys are. So thank you. We appreciate it. And you're right. Wilson, is he, he is an energizer. He definitely keeps it going. Yes, he all, does. All, yes, he does. But we want to thank you so much for coming out. And we, you know, we will have our audience and we will post this up so they know where to go. All your links will be attached. Absolutely. And God bless you, man. And you have a great rest of your day. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. And God bless you as well. OK, thanks for coming, man. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in to Behind the Scenes with Man Robinson. Our aim is to genuinely encourage and inspire you with the compelling stories and content we provide in hopes that you'll inspire others. For info on upcoming episodes and all things surrounding film, techniques, and motivation, follow at Man Robinson on all social platforms. View on blackfilm.com, manrobinson.org, or stream anytime on Spotify and iTunes.